Manchester United, a global football powerhouse, but what's really happening behind the scenes? In this deep dive into the Red Devils' finances, we'll uncover just how did United rake in a record-breaking $650 million in revenue, yet still trail their local rivals? We'll also see why, despite their commercial success, the club has been operating at a loss for the past three years. And with spiralling debts, can United truly afford their ambitious plans for the future? Join us as we crunch the numbers and reveal the financial reality of one of the world's biggest football clubs. This season, it's a mess, it's true. United's top line has been a roller coaster. Consistent growth from 2015 until COVID disrupted the trend. But the Red Devils are soaring again. In 2023, they achieved their best ever revenue performance, raking in almost 650 million. Over the decade, United delivered 5% growth in revenue. This performance placed them second in the Premier League, but still 50 million shy of rivals, Manchester City. How did United achieve this? Let's break down their revenue streams. First commercial revenues, which now dominate, with United breaking the 300 million pound barrier for the first time in 2023. 17% surge from the previous year. Key components, United's long-running shirt partnership with Adidas, reportedly delivering 75 million in 2023. A 47 million team viewer shirt sponsorship deal that ends this year. Tezos training kit deal for 20 million, and DXC on the sleeve for the same amount. Beyond these headline deals, United secured another 141 million across sponsorship, retail, and licensing deals. In July 2023, United extended their Adidas deal, increasing its value to 90 million for seasons in the Champions League and 80 million otherwise. There's also a change on the shirt front. Qualcomm's Snapdragon taking over with improved terms at 60 million a year. These two deals alone could add another 30 million to United's coffers, proving their commercial powerhouse status remains strong. Next, broadcasting revenues, which brought in 209 million, six down from the previous year and over 30 million behind their 2019 peak. Let's compare these figures to understand the drop-off. In 2019, United made 151 million from the Premier League, finishing sixth, and 83 million from their Champions League quarter-final run. Fast forward to 2023, Premier League revenues jumped to 178 million due to a higher finish and increased TV rights value. However, competing in the Europa League instead of the Champions League cost United over 50 million the 2023 seeing less than 29 million from European competition. In 2024, United will see a boost from Champions League football, but they are back in the Europa League this coming season, so broadcasting revenues will continue to fluctuate. Finally, match day revenues hit an all-time high in 2023, generating 136 million. This was fueled by Europa League football and runs to both FA and League Cup finals, winning the latter. United played an astounding 33 home games, plus three trips to Wembley. Despite reaching the FA Cup final this season, the Red Devils played eight fewer home games, likely reducing matchday revenues for 2024. But do we have any further insights into the season that's just passed? As a listed company, we do have access to United's half-year numbers. Comparing like for like, we see 383 million delivered in H1, boosted by Champions League football. However, finishing 8th in the league and playing 8 fewer home games will be a hit to the top line in H2. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now let's take a look at profits. The bottom line remained in the black until 2020, but the last three years have been in the red. 2023 showing an 11 million operating loss. I always think the proof's in the pudding. What's behind this decline? Let's address this in our p and walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue and dive into staff costs. Wages have fluctuated, increasing until COVID, followed by sharper growth. 2023 saw a 14% reduction in the wage bill to 331 million, possibly due to lack of Champions League bonuses and Cristiano Ronaldo's mutually agreed departure. Over the decade, wage growth mirrored revenues at 5%, and as a proportion, they accounted for 51% in 2023, one of the healthier positions in the league, never exceeding 70% across this decade. How did this translate to points on the pitch? United's inconsistent form meant volatile wages for point prices. 
Their most efficient season, 2015's fourth place finish, with points costing under 3 million. But 2022's sixth place finish and peak wages saw that price skyrocket to almost 7 million a point. But after factoring in staff costs, United still has hundreds of millions to manage. Next, operating expenses. These followed a similar trajectory, ramping up, COVID disruption, then greater acceleration. In 2023, these rose to 161 million. The major cost buckets, match day costs of 38 million, up 50% due to the 33 home games. Utilities and property maintenance at 34 million. Then commercial costs, logistics and travel, and perhaps surprisingly, legal fees at over 18 million. That leaves 29 million of other costs. An additional hefty expense, though absent in 2023, is payouts to sacked managers. The untimely departures of David Moyes, Louis Van Aal, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Rangnick resulted in a whopping 57 million in payouts as the club struggled in the post-Sir Alex Ferguson era. Despite these costs, United remained EBITDA positive every year. Third, stadium and facilities, these costs have steadily increased, reaching 15 million in 2023. With a 50 million training ground upgrade on the cards and potential billions for stadium redevelopment, these costs could rise significantly in future years. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. Heavy investment has been a constant, rising since 2019 to reach 152 million in 2023. While some signings succeeded, many expensive acquisitions have failed to deliver returns on the pitch. This has pushed United into the red for the last three seasons. But of course, uh, at the moment, that's uh, it's a difficult uh, time for us. But what about financial fair play? Due to the lack of funding from the Glazers, United's maximum losses in this three-year spell is just 15 million. Starting with operating profit, we add in United's massive interest charges to get losses before tax. Then certain costs such as youth development and women's football can be excluded, as well as adjustments for COVID-related income loss. These aren't disclosed, so we are estimating. We're assuming 35 million a year in allowable costs, plus 70 million of COVID impact in 2021 and 25 million in 2022. Add those back in and we get to United's PSR result. Six million of losses within the threshold. But what about 2024? With Sir Jim Ratcliffe's one and a quarter billion investment likely to meet the league's secure funding requirements, United can afford to lose 105 million over these three years. However, the results in those first two years means United are restricted to just an £18 million loss. As detailed in our transfer window video, Champions League football, player sales and the release of high wage earners were expected to give United enough room to pass PSR rules. No, no, they don't have my, they don't <laughs> have my number. Finally, let's see if cash tells the same story. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, driven by EBITDA items, is in full swing. United's commercial arm has driven cash flows in every single year. Over the decade, that's led to over one and a half billion coming into Old Trafford. But what about those heavy transfer fees? It's a mirror image. United have spent 1.2 billion in transfer cash, with over 200 million earmarked for future payments. I am flabbergasted. Despite this, Man United's operational cash flows have covered the heavy transfer spend. The result bringing in 384 million over these 10 years. So has any funding been required? Well, over this 10 year spell, the Glazers have provided no equity cash. All funding came as debt, with 50 million actually taken out of the club through dividends and share buybacks. This left United with 613 million of gross debt in June 2023. By December, this had spiralled to over 770 million. Subsequently, United have confirmed 120 million of Ratcliffe's investment has been used to pay down revolving credit facilities, bringing that debt down closer to 650 million. With billion pound infrastructure projects, a large gap to close on their rivals and new football leadership, can Manchester United secure the resources to achieve their goals both on and off the pitch? Only time will tell.